God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lodge on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Thursday night service. Amen. Along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena, and our beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my brother, Harry Evans, and we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of 2022. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. God bless you, Sister Holloman. I love you. God bless you, Sister Esther Spivey. I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, y'all truly bless me when y'all show up for the night service. And I have an awesome anointed word for y'all tonight, amen, that'll teach you, amen, no, that'll feed you. I got to get that right because we're we, we going to talk about feeding tonight. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister Kenya King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Amen. You ought to join them and be blessed. Amen. I'm truly blessed by his teaching. Hallelujah. My friend, friend for over 20 years, hitting 30. We're close to getting to 30. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 400 messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join them and be blessed. Highly anointed word of God. Hallelujah, to feed you the word of God. There he is, my buddy, Romeo Isaac, my brother. Hallelujah. My brother, Romeo Isaac. Friends, deep over 30 years. Deep over 30 years, 36 years to be exact. Brother Romeo Isaac, 36 years, 36 to 37, because me and d be 36 years married this year. So, man, you've definitely been with his friends before I even got married. Hallelujah. I love you, Brother Romeo Isaac, in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Sister Lane. I love you. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm nothing without you, but I'm everything with you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tonight's message, part four. Part four of obsession. Part four of obsession. An idea or thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes on a person's mind. The darkness that many believers are ignorant of. Hallelujah. Our foundation of verse throughout this series has been John 3, 19. Hallelujah reads on this wise. It says, and this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation that the light, that the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible has come into the world. And men, he has come into the world and men love darkness, love obsession, love ideas and thoughts that continually intrude upon their mind rather than the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible because their deeds, because everything they do, because their ideas and their thoughts that continually preoccupy their mind were evil. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for part four of tonight's lesson. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for the listeners. Nothing without them, everything with them. Oh, that men, when you return, are going to wish that they had have sat under your anointing before you show back up. God, let this word be a blessing to everybody that hears it tonight. Let it feed them more than educate them. God, we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The light, the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible has come into the world. 
Let's see how many times we're going to hear this word that he came into the world. Let's go. Here, John 12 and 46. So we got John 3, 19 here where it says, and the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible came into the world. Then we get, and then Jesus says again in John 12 and 46, he says, I have come as an agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness, should not abide in a, a obsession. He said, should not. He didn't say that you would not. He said that you should not because you determine whether or not you're going to allow yourself to be a slave to an idea or a thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes upon your mind. You determine that. But Jesus has come as an agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible into the world that whoever believes in him should not abide in obsession. He also says in John 10 and 10, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. That means you don't got life. You only got breath. You got the breath of life. You do not. You want the life that gives off breath. You don't, you don't, you don't just want, you don't just want a piece of the cake. You want the whole cake. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Obsession. Here we go. We, we, it's time for me to, time for you to start getting fed. Obsession is the main reason why men today lack and are void of the Christ life. It's the main reason. Why? Because obsession continuously prevents us from walking in and touching. Here it is. That's our word for tonight. If you've been listening to, to this series, this is part four. If you listen to part one, Part two, part three, and part four. There's a word that I that 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 God drives me to create these these series in in the in the do the PowerPoint slideshow to flow through. Obsession continuously prevents us from walking and touching what is touching to come into contact with, to come into contact with, because obsession prevents us from coming into contact with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So that we will never experience. See, you got people today, they say they're born again believers, they say they got a relationship with Christ, but they've never touched him. They've never come into contact with him. And because they've never come into contact with him, they have never experienced the power of his life. They've never experienced the power of his life in the name of Jesus. Oh, we're going to get deep into this, into this meal right now. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 48. Hallelujah. Let's see if this, let, let's see the contact. Let's see the touching. It reads, a woman having an issue. See, 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 y'all got, some of y'all got some issues. Some of y'all got some issues, but you won't touch Christ so that he can deal with that issue. So there was this woman, she, she had this issue of blood for 12 years. Now, the key thing here is to remember she had an issue of blood. Leviticus 17 and 11, hear me now, if you're taking notes, Leviticus 17 and 11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So she had a problem. She had a life problem. She had an issue with the blood that provided her her life for 12 years. She had this issue. Do you, I mean, have you had an issue? Do you got an issue going on right now in your life? Because all you got to do is, 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 is touch the agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible, makes things visible. This woman had an issue with her life for 12 years because Leviticus 17 and 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. So she had this issue with her life for 12 years. 
which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. That means this woman spent all her time in obsession. She had all these ideas and these thoughts that, that, that intruded upon her mind. You know what though? You ought, to, you ought to go to this doctor. You ought to go to this doctor. You ought to eat this food. You ought to drink this drink. You ought to stop doing this. You ought to stop doing that. How to just touch the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible and immediately you'll get healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But uh, neither could be healed of any thing that them obsession thoughts put in her head. So she came behind Jesus. She, she didn't come to the front of him. Hallelujah. She came up from behind him. Hallelujah. It don't matter. Hallelujah. The men with the friend. Uh, Jesus was in the house. Uh, they couldn't get in the house. They went up on the rooftop. Let the man down through the roof. Uh, all it's, uh, it's all about you got to get a touch. Uh, you got to touch him. You got to come into contact with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. She came behind Jesus. She came behind him. And then she touched. And then she came into contact with the border of his garments. What in the world is the definition of the word border? The outer edge of something. See, all you got, if you can just get to the outer edge. Hallelujah. In football, all that football got to do is just touch the line. It ain't got to cross the line for you to get a touchdown. All it's got to do is just touch the field goal line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She touched the outer edge of the clothes he was wearing and immediately, immediately, the problem that she had in her life for 12 years went away. It says immediately her issue of blood. Leviticus 17 and 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The issue of blood dried up. Dried up, done, done. No, that's that's the end of this. That's the end of this issue. You have touched the outer edge. I'm a, you didn't even touch my skin. You just touched the very clothing. You just touched. See if, see if you can just touch. If you can just touch any part of the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible immediately, whatever the issue is you having in your life will dry up. And it's going to take, but it's going to take faith for you to know that. Hallelujah. We're going to find out that it takes faith at the end of these verses. And Jesus said, Jesus said, who touched me? Who, who came into contact with me when all denied? That is a shame. That is the same. All the night. So everybody else was saying, I ain't no, I went, we ain't, light agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible. You here, but ain't, but we ain't touch you. We didn't touch it. We're going to still run around uh, with all these issues that we got in our life. Even though you're in the midst of us, uh, where two or three gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them, but ain't nobody touching him. Ain't nobody putting their hands on him. When all denied. It didn't say some of them. You know what all means? Everybody. Everybody. Sister Holloman. Everybody that was around the agent to stimulate sight and make things visible. Every last one of them denied that they had came into contact with him. Peter and they that were with him said, Master, agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Hallelujah. The multitude throng thee. You know what the definition of the word throng is? All around crowded. You got this crowd of people all around you. And ain't nobody coming into contact with you. You got all these people running around and calling themselves born again believers. And nobody's coming into contact with them. Because everybody else. You got so many born again believers today running around with issues in their life. And, and, but they know these verses. They know these verses, but don't you worry about nothing. I, I got, man, I got it for us tonight. 
the anointing God going to tell you why these people were strong in Jesus, pressing up, pressing thee, pressing thee. So, 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 Sister Holloman, so you got all these, you got this crowd of people around Jesus, and they pressing, they pressing up against him, but, but nobody's coming into contact. Nobody's coming into contact, but I know these people that, that's strong in them, that's, that's coming into contact with him, they got to have some issues in their life. How do I know that everybody in that crowd that was strong in Jesus, that was pressing up against him, had an issue in their life? I'm going to tell you why, because he hadn't died yet, so that means life had not been poured out yet. So that means everybody that was strong in him, everybody that was surrounding him was still a slave to sin. And that's an issue in a person's life. The multitude throngs thee and press thee and says thou who touched me? Who, who came into contact with you? And Jesus said, somebody Somebody came into contact with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Somebody came into contact with me, for I perceive that power. I perceive that power is gone out of me. Good God Almighty, power then came. Somebody then touched me to where the power came out. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people, for what cause she had came into contact with him. God bless you, Sister King, I love you. See, are you, are, that's the thing today. I mean, just, just, I, I don't care. Who's around Jesus? I don't care how big the crowd is. Are you, are you, are you, if you got an issue in your life, are you making sure you touching him? Are you making, because if you ain't touching him, then that's because of obsession. You, some, some idea, some thought is intruding upon your mind to prevent you from touching him when you should touch him because I know you know these verses. She told the people for what cause she had touched Jesus and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. It wasn't the border of his garment that made her whole. It wasn't her saying, if I may but just touch the hem of his garment, I may be made whole. No, she had to activate her faith, a, a faith that caused her, no matter how big the crowd was, no matter, she had to touch him. Uh -huh. Hallelujah, Zacchaeus didn't care how many people it was. He climbed up into the sycamore tree. In the name of Jesus, you got to touch him. You got to touch the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible in order to hear him say, be of good comfort, go in peace. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you why you are not touching him either. I'm going to tell you why, why, why you, why some of y'all are just like that crowd of people that throng him, them 12 disciples. And we're going to, and I'm going to tell you, I got some verses coming and I'm going to bring this, these verses back up to us. I'm going to tell you why y'all are not touching him either. Obsession, obsession, all of them, Worldly thoughts that keep intruding upon your mind. The world is nothing but your own magnified mind. And what magnifies 
our mind is obsession. And many of you enjoy touching everything. Many of you enjoy touching everything, intruding upon your mind. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, y'all, y'all, there, there it is, right there, there the mirror is, there the mirror is. Oh yeah, you, 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 you touch your cell phone, you touch your TV remote control, you touch, you, you, you females are touch a, another woman's husband, you, you males are touch a, another man's wife, you, you touch somebody's bank account that you ain't supposed to be touching. Oh, you, oh, we, you, oh, you, you understand what touching is. Get you a mirror. Oh, you are you touch somebody with some nasty words out your mouth. You understand touching. You ain't stupid. You understand touching. And the reason why you touching it is because of obsession. Man, I better shut up. I better shut up talking to y'all. Man, I better shut up talking to y'all. Why? Because your mind. Because your mind is made up. And you're already touching the things you love. You're already touching the things you love. My question is, 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 it, is your mind in love with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible? Is your mind in love with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible? John 3.19 says that for some of y'all, this is not true. Some of y'all, this is not true. You, 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 you're not in love with the agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible. John 3, 19 says that. It says that some of y'all love obsession. You love ideas or thoughts that continue to preoccupy or intrude upon your mind rather than the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. And that is why this world is full of men who are slaves to obsession returning again to the days of Noah. I'm going to tell you something. You, you think, you think we ain't living, oh man, we're living in the days of Noah. We're living in the days of Noah. You, 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 you got the Democrats, they want to, they want to do abortions. You got the Republicans, they want to stop it. So you got the, so, so you got the Democrats, they want to, they want to stop life from getting here. And then you got the Republicans, they want life to get here, but they won't, but they won't introduce the, the life that they want to be born to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible. They, what they want to do is they want to, they want to take these, these babies that's being born so that they'll grow up and become make America great again individuals. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. I'm telling you, the wickedness of man is great in the earth today because nobody nobody's touching the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible we're not touching it we're not touching it and that every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually meaning that God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that obsession was running the world and that's what's running the world today obsession and the reason for this here it is here it is right there sister king sister holloman sister selena sister spivey brother isaac the reason for this is the state of today's pastors it's the state of today's pastors why because they want to be famous and not feeders. They want to be famous and not feeders. They want to be teachers of the law and not sowers of the word. They want to be teachers of the law when Galatians 3 and 12 says that the law is not a faith. John 21 and 17. Oh, yes, Sister Holloman. The reason for why born again believers today are being overcome by obsession is because of today's pastors. I'm going to prove that in tonight's teaching. 
John 21 and 17 says, Jesus said to Peter, he said it to him three times. He said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because the agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible had said this unto him three times, lovest thou me? And then Peter said unto the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible, he said, agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible, you know all things and you knowest that I love you. Then the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible said unto him, feed my sheep. Be my born again believers, the living word of God. Feed them the word that makes all things visible and that stimulates sight that comes by faith. Not teach, here it is, not teach, but feed. What's the difference? Sister Erica Holloman, what's the difference between teach and feed? Teaching educates. Feeding causes growth. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do thirst and hunger after righteousness. Not blessed are they which hunger and thirst, but do hunger and thirst. Because when you do hunger and thirst, you go feed yourself. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled, they will be fed. It does not say, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be taught. First Peter 2 and 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. There is a lot of teaching taking place but good luck seeing any growth come out of these people because the teaching that they're getting lacks the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Now, the teaching is from the Bible. It is from the Bible, but these pastors today, Sister Selena, these pastors today, they don't know how to feed it to where the hearer's faith grows in the obsession. They don't know how to feed it to where the hearer's faith grows in the darkness, in the obsession. But, and, 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 and not in the teacher's fame. See, 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 they teach and then they become famous. But their members haven't grown at all. The, the body of Christ ain't growing at all. You, you got all this teaching going on, but you ain't got no growing taking place. There, they don't know how to feed it to where the hearer grow to, to where the hearer's faith grows. They 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 they, they teaching it to where the teacher becomes famous. T D Jakes is famous for his teaching, not for his feeding. Because if he was feeding his family wouldn't be in so much turmoil. And then, then they want to turn it around, and then we want, then we want to say 
that we're being attacked by the enemy. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. You now, now see if if you see if Pastor Red is getting attacked by the enemy, Pastor Red, no, but when but when but when Reggie and Ezra Nay and Dela, my son, my daughter, my wife is getting attacked by the enemy, I know how they live. And I know that they are not submitted to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So I don't care how famous, if, 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 if I'm ever going to be famous, since I don't seek fame, I get that the, uh, I could, I've taught, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And then when he is old, he will not depart from it. Because when because when he gets up, he got because first the, the mother feeds the baby so that they can grow, and then when the baby grows, the baby feeds itself. As newborn babes, desire the sense of milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Here we go, right here. Mothers do not feed their babies with teachings. They do not do that. Nor do they teach them to grow. No, they help them to grow by feeding them day by day, night by night, mothers feed their babies. Good luck finding pastors who feed their sheep day and night. Good luck. Good luck with that. Pastor King, I love you. Good luck finding a pastor that feeds. No, no, I, I'm, 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 we're not talking about teaching. We're not talking about teaching. You done been taught enough. You done been taught enough. You should be growing in your faith. Romans 1 and 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. But 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 you got pastors still teaching people the law that is not a faith instead of feeding them the living word of God. Here it is, Luke 9, verse 12 through 17. I told you we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to to to, to the lady with the 12 issue of blood as I teach this. Watch this. As the day began to wear away. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, send the crowd away to go into the surrounding villages and countryside to find lodging and get provisions. For we are here in a desolate place. But he said to them, this is what he said to the disciples. This is what he's saying to the pastors today. Don't send the people away. Feed the people. I didn't tell you to teach them nothing. They've been taught enough. They've been taught enough. The government says, I'm going to teach you up to the 12th grade, and then I'm kicking you out of high school. Community college says, we're going to take you to a two-year college degree, and then we're kicking you out. Go up to a university. Verse 13, he said to them, give them something to eat. Every Thursday and every Sunday, I got to come here and make sure I give y'all a word of God to eat, to chew on. Feed, you feed them. The agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible said, you feed them. The agent that stimulates sight and makes things possible in Matthew chapter 28 says, go into the world and preach the gospel. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes. And that is the Pastor King. Five loaves of bread and two fishes 
if they're eating, they will cause somebody to grow. Don't you worry about the number. Don't you worry about the number. Don't. Do you got something to eat? Do, 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 S -S -S Selena, he didn't. He he ain't looking at the number. He ain't looking at the number. He's looking at. But you got something that you can film with. Pastor Red, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care if you only got five people in attendance with you tonight. Because that's what the number says. It says I got, I got five viewers. I don't, I don't care if you got five viewers. You feed them five viewers. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. See, y'all good tonight. I got five viewers. At least if that's one of y'all can get a loaf. Now, we're going to we're gonna have to... Cut the fish in half now. We're going to have to give. Yes, Sister Selena, feed these few sheep. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. You ain't got to go buy no food. You got the, the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible, but, but they didn't have the sight in order that they have the, the, the faith to make it visible to see that the five loaves of bread and the two fish was enough. God bless you, sister Anita. I love you. Amen. I got seven watching. Thank you, sister Anita. Hallelujah. Well, well we're going to have to split the bread now because we only got five loaves. But hold on, because we got the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible, he been to hook all of us up. Watch this, uh, hallelujah, for there were about 5,000 men in the name of Jesus, and he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each, and they did so and had them all sit down and taking the five loaves, taking the seven people in attendance with me tonight, and the two fish, he looked up to heaven in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody going to hear me tonight and said a blessing over them. God bless all seven of the people here with me, viewing with me tonight. Thank you, God. Feed them tonight, Lord, with your anointed word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed over them. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. They all ate and were satisfied. Oh, yeah, Pastor King, going to have some leftovers. And what was left over was picked up in 12 baskets of broken pieces. See, don't worry about nothing, you 12 disciples. Not only am I gonna feed them, but I'm gonna give you 12 baskets. And I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give you 12 baskets. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you what they got. I'm gonna give you your own basket because I don't because I don't want you teaching them the law to get some of what I gave them for you. I'm just I'm gonna go on and give you your your 12 baskets of broken pieces. I'm gonna give it to you. I don't, I don't want you messing with Sister Anita's. Of food. I don't want you messing with Sister Selena's. I don't want you messing with Sister Erica's. And I don't want you mess messing with Sister Spivey. I don't want you messing with Brother Romeo Isaac. I don't want you messing with Sister King. I don't want you messing with Pastor King. In the name of Jesus, uh, somebody gonna hear me tonight. I'm gonna give you yours, Pastor Red. All you gotta do uh, is keep on being obedient to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you take nothing from Sister Spivey. Leave Sister Spivey's money alone. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The problem with believers today is that they're not being fed. They're not being fed. They are being educated. Oh, Pastor King, they're being educated and getting educated to death. Oh, we're being educated. We're getting educated to death. But there is no growth. There is no growth. Because they are not being fed. See, that was the problem. See, the rich man never fed Lazarus. The, the rich man never fed Lazarus. The man laid there at his gate. Y'all going to churches. Y'all 
you know, getting all this education, but you're not getting educated from the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. The rich man never fed Lazarus. Are you being fed? Do you know that you're being fed? Don't worry about that. I got it on the slide. Hold on to that question. Are you being fed? If not, then that is why your faith has not grown. The only way faith can grow is you must be fed faith. And if your faith has not grown, then it is because of obsession. It is because some idea or some thought has intruded upon your mind that makes you think that the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible can't solve the issues that you got with your blood. If your faith has not grown, it is because of obsession. Why? It's because, you know, why? Because you ain't stupid. So you, so y'all want, you want to play stupid. You ain't stupid. You, you, you a smart person and you know you're smart. But you, but you play stupid when it comes to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. You know when you are being fed. You know when you're being fed. You ain't fitting them clothes you bought 15 years ago. You ain't fitting them. And the reason you ain't fitting them is because you've been eating. You've been eating good, too. You've been eating real good. But you're still, but you're still wearing the same faith from 15 years ago. You've been getting educated for the last three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years. And your faith is still the same as it was in year one. If you have the faith to be saved, so ask yourself the question. When did you give your life to the Lord? When did you get water baptized? That is year one. So if you have the faith to be saved, if you have a year one, then you should have the faith to live holy in 2024, year 15. Or whatever year it is. You know how many years you've been saved. If not. It is because of obsession. If, if, if you. If your faith. If your faith hasn't grown. In. I'm, I'm, in year two. In year two. You. I'm going to tell you something. You ain't. You, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. My, I, mean, I got a I got a six month old grandbaby. I I I, I see him. I, I see him like sometime. Reggie bring him by. Uh, his his mama's breastfeeding him. Lola's breastfeeding him. So every weekend, I see Roman. This joker didn't got big. So I when I I see I said I said, I said Grandpa Boo Boo. Grandpa Boo Boo getting big. I mean, he, he, first time he came over, we had to hold him. We couldn't do that. Next time, you know, he was crawling. Now, now, now he about to start walking. He, he didn't got big. He, he know who grandpa is now because he's growing. You know, why he, 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 he growing not because, not, you know, but though, uh, they ain't teaching him the alphabets yet. They ain't teaching him the, the, how, to, how to add and subtract. But they feeding him every day. And he's growing. He's growing every day. And you've been calling yourself a born again believer. And your faith ain't grown an inch. But yet, you're getting educated to death. You know, when, when Jesus, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, teach us to pray. So the Lord taught them the Lord's prayer that everybody knows. So if, 
he teaches them so he said, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He was teaching that. Now, to know whether or not you've grown from that is you forgive. If you haven't grown from that, all you've done is been educated. So all you've done is been educated. If you know that the Ten Commandments says, thou shalt not commit adultery, you've been educated, but you, you, never, you never consumed it, you never ate it, because if you, because if you would have ate it, then you wouldn't have done it. You see, that, that, that's, you know, but I'm gonna tell you something about Pastor Red. Pastor Red ain't stupid. Pa you know, Pastor Red then grew. Pastor, because Pastor Red know, if he go out there and commit adultery on d -Live, I know I'm gonna get caught. I know I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, you know, what I know I'm gonna get caught. I'm gonna, you know what though, cause when, cause you know, the Holy Ghost says you're gonna get caught. You know what I do? I just go on and write it. I just go on and write it. Caught. Caught. I know I'm gonna get caught. I know I'm gonna get caught. I, 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 I know I'm gonna get caught. I already know it. So I don't even, I ain't said, no way. I ain't got the time for that. And you know what? And, and then you know what God tells me? When, you know, God gives me one and God says, God says, I'm gonna tell you what. When you get caught, first I'm gonna let, first you're gonna have to deal with Dela. And I'm gonna be like, this I I don't, I don't even do nothing wrong. And Dela nags me to death. I, I could just about imagine this nagging some joker if I got caught doing something. Man, no, man, I never mind. I'm I'm gonna take this word. That, that I've been educated by, I'm gonna and I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna live by it every day. I ain't got the time to mess with Dela Red. I ain't got the time for that drama. I wanna, I wanna, I want my, I want my peace. This thing right here messed with my peace when I ain't did nothing wrong. Has your faith grown since you got saved? Has your faith grown? You know that you you know you um, you know whether or not when you thirst and hunger after righteousness, if it's being filled or not. You know that. You know that. You know whether or not you're being fed good food, and you should see growth. You 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 should see why you're not cursing people out anymore. You should see why you ain't being nasty towards people anymore. You should see why you 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 should be able to see that the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible will it will enable you to see that. He will enable you to see that. You know you you come here, you can sit under this ministry, you can listen to me feed you the word of God and you can fight it. But you know what you can't fight? You know, you can't fight you. You can't fight. You know how much you've grown. You know if, if, if your faith is stronger in 2024 than it was in 2015. You know that. You, you, you know if you know if 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 since you crossed in the January the first, 2024, you this is this is day 25. This is day 25 of 2024. You this so that's that's almost we almost we three days from being four weeks in, and do you see a growth? from December the 31st, 2023, do you see growth? Or are you still the same person? Are you still the same person? Watch this right here. This is part four of this series. So for the last two weeks, all we've been getting fed here is the topic of obsession and that it is 
thoughts and ideas that intrudes upon the person's mind. And I want to know since part one, have you been able to identify the obsession that you were ignorant of prior to this series being taught? Because you should have, because all that I've been introducing you to, the most dominant word that's been coming out of my mouth during this series is the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible that came into the world, but men love darkness rather than the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible because their deeds are evil. If you, if your faith has not grown, and only you can answer that question, if your faith has not grown, it is because of obsession, and it is because you refuse to touch the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. You have, you have not touched him. Cause, Cause, I'm gonna tell you something right now. You, you, you ain't stupid. You ain't touching no hot stove. You're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're not touching no electricity. You're not touching no boiling water on the stove. You're not touching that. Mm mm. No, no, you ain't touching no poisonous animal. You know exactly what it means when God says, touch not the unclean thing. Come out from among them. The, the, the word touch is a very easy word to comprehend, but yet every day we, 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 we touch something other than the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. We, 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 we touch politics, we, we, we touch racism. We touch stupid conversations that we shouldn't be touching. But we won't touch the word of God. We'll, we'll, we'll get up in the morning and we'll go get in our cars and we'll touch the radio thing and we'll go to Steve Harvey or we'll go to Ricky Smiley. But we, rather than touching the MP3 player to play the Holy Bible, we'll touch even the gospel music. You know what I you know what I said? You know what I said? So so what is what has Pastor Red, watch this, what has Pastor Red done in 2024? What has he done? I get in my truck in the morning. I want to listen to gospel music. But I need to touch the 66 books of the Bible. Because if I touch them 66 books of the Bible, then the opportunity to be able to touch the agent that stimulates sight and, 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 and makes things visible increases. See, see, singing gospel music is good, but touching the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible is more needful. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Being cumbered about to do stuff with Jesus is okay. But choosing to sit at his feet is better. Listening to gospel music is okay, but choosing to listen to the word of God 
through the same stereo system, through the same speakers, is better. I'm not teaching you. I'm feeding you life. I'm feeding you wisdom. It is more wiser to listen to the word of God than listening to gospel music. It is more beneficial to you. Watch this. What's, what's more beneficial to us? Water or soda? What's more, I, I, I can wait for somebody to write that in the, in, in the comments that, so, so, cause, so, so I make sure I'm not the only person to think which one is more beneficial. What's more beneficial to us, water or soda? What's more beneficial? I'm on the way, I'm not gonna move until somebody tell me what's more beneficial in the comment box. I got five people still on there with me according to the viewer thing. So somebody should be able to tell me what's, what, what, uh, uh, water. That's right, Brother Isaac, water, water. Brother Isaac, I'm gonna tell you why water is more beneficial. Because the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible gave us living water. He gave us water. God did not create Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, he created water. But obsession makes us want sodas. Obsession makes us want alcohol. Obsession makes us want cigarettes. Obsession makes us want marijuana. Obsession makes us want wine. Water is the last thing that gets attention, but yet it is the one thing that Jesus gave us. And the woman at the well, rather than touching the one that would have gave her living water, said to him that our father gave us this well and you in 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 this water that I'm finna touch and I'm finna pull out of here is, is you know is 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 the water I've been drinking. And she didn't even notice she was talking to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. But the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible told her, woman, if you knew who it was that you was talking to me. You would have asked me for this water and I would have give you living water. I would have gave you everlasting, eternal water that you will never thirst again. And you got God's children that have been saved, who have the faith to be saved. And you got pastors who are not feeding them the living water. They're still feeding them from this water from the rock that Moses gave to the Israelites in the desert. And that is why they drank from that rock in the desert. And just as soon as they got finished drinking from that rock in the desert, they went and built a golden calf. You better get an understanding of what it means to be fed and to be taught. You get taught so that you can go live and then when you go live, the Holy Ghost will feed you because of the living that you're doing from what you've been educated with. The agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible is the teacher. 
First John says, you have no need that any man teach you nothing, but you have an anointing and he will, you, you do not need Pastor Red to teach you. Pastor Red wants to feed you. Paul says, I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. I, Paul didn't, Paul didn't, Paul didn't, Paul, he didn't say nothing about it, he taught. He said, I planted. He didn't say nothing about he taught. He didn't say nothing about Apollo's taught. He said, Apollo's water. But it's God is, it's God is causing the growth. It's God that's causing the growth. Because both Paul and Apollos were obedient to the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Is your pastor. Is the person that you call pastor and that you sit under. Does he feed you the living word of God? Or, do, or are you impressed with the fact that he can feed you the entire 66 books of the Bible? Because y'all need to stop being impressed with people that can quote Bible verses. Because though they can quote them, they don't know how to live them. And the reason why they don't know how to live them is because they've never eaten them. And because they've never eaten them, they've never been able to grow by them. And because they've never been able to grow by them, they're malnutrition. And because they're malnutrition, they can't feed a nutrition person. Obsession. The darkness that many believers are ignorant of. Part five. Yeah, we got a part five. He ain't done. Sunday at 11 a.m. Part five. Obsession. The darkness that many believers are ignorant of. Thank you for joining me tonight. I love every last one of you. I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you will begin to touch everything that the Holy Ghost brings to your remembrance. I will pray that you will start touching the Bible. I pray that you will start touching your Bible more than you touch your telephone. I pray that you will touch your Bible more than you will touch the remote control to your television. I pray that when you touch the Bible, that not only will you read it, but you will begin to eat what it says and start growing by it. I pray that when you read your Bible that you will know that you are, that you've been crucified and that the first 39 books, Genesis to Malachi is, is teaching you and showing you the life of an uncrucified person versus the 27 books of the new Matthew through Revelation that show us how we should be living. And as you learn the 27 books, Matthew through Revelation, you should be growing in what it's saying because it speaks about the agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible to the crucified man. Thank you for joining me tonight. I will see you Sunday at 8 a.m. with Pastor King. Then I'll be back before you at 11 o'clock with part five of Obsession, the darkness that many believers are ignorant of. I love every last one of you. Thank you for making my night a beautiful night by coming here and allowing me to feed you the living word of God. Amen and amen.